Welcome to the amazing world of sclerology. Big breakthroughs in healing are rare. This one happened over a thousand years ago when someone in China noticed that the markings in the whites of the eye matched with events in the physical body. Today, we've vastly expanded that discovery through special photography and looking at lots of eyes. Imagine being able to see your current state of health improve by simple before and after photos. The whites of the eyes are referred to here as the scleras. There are four sclera quadrants in each eye, upper, lower, lateral, which means toward the outside, and medial, toward the nose. Here, we're looking at the upper and lower quadrants. Health professionals will recognize that we are looking at the whole area from the limbus, which is the edge of the iris, to the canthus, which is the periphery of the visible eyeball at the horizontal edges. We're observing the general coloring of those eyes and the various lines, thick or thin, long or short, forked or bent, straight or curved, and in certain combinations. All of these characteristics have specific meanings. They all tell a story of what is happening in the body. Sclerology can be defined as the science and art of observing the markings in the whites of the eyes and their relation to systemic health. Technically, the name could have been episclerology. This is because most of the markings we observe here are in the episclera, which is the first or anterior white layer that we see. But a lot of other markings are seen in the conjunctiva, the movable membrane on top of the episclera and none of them in the sclera itself, which is beneath the top white episclera layer. Here, in the top photo, we're seeing an uneven parallel line emanating from the thymus area and thickening as it moves into the spleen area. To your right, in that photo, there is a lateral red wash showing heart disease. In the lower left photo, we see a patch of melanin a rare and negative portend when seen in blue eyes. In the photo to the lower right, we see an encapsulation representing a small benign tumor. So what do these markings represent? Basically, we're seeing here uh, what represents stress and congestion in the body. Let's define stress and congestion. We define these as the presence of abnormal concentrations of any single or combination of certain elements within a vessel, organ, or tissue area, causing obstruction and thus interfering uh, appreciably with normal function. Before we get into a few uh, specific markings, just consider the vast variety of markings that are possible, even though most lines in the most markings in the scleras are lines. They can show disturbed function in organs and tissues, whether it's overactive or underactive, acid or alkaline. We can see the effects of parasites, drugs, toxic environments, and that's just for starters. But first, we get a good health history, consider signs and symptoms, check blood work, x-ray or MRI, reports from other health professionals, and then we consider all of that over against what we see in the eyes. We're often surprised because the scleras can apparently show information that no other test can demonstrate. And it's brief, quick, non-painful, completely natural, and non-invasive. But the best part is that we can see many problems developing well in advance of symptoms. Among the many signs we see are forks. Forks come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They can be wobbly, they can be straight, even, uneven, tiny, and large. Significant injuries often show up as forks, such as fractures, wounds, dislocations, concussions, and compressions. Even conditions re resulting from prolonged exposure and poisoning. Some fork, forks uh, show metabolic trauma from inflammatory processes, from biochemical responses to stress, injury, poor nutrition, and so on. Dietary traumas via either inflammatory or dietary insult 
or alteration of body chemistry due to poor nutrition also show up in the scleras. Here's another sclera sign. The B3 bulge, seen at, here at uh, 9 o'clock and at the limbus in this right eye, is correlated with vitamin B3 deficiency or malabsorption. It appears as an opaque kind of ghostly bulge near the 3 and 9 o'clock positions, laterally and or medially. B3 deficiency is most often due to digestive problems and or dietary inadequacies or insults. The sign will disappear when B3 is correctly added to the treatment program, usually as B-complex rather than uh, separate B vitamins. Other than general fatigue symptoms uh, caused by the lack of uh, usual energy, uh, usable energy within the cells, uh, other body areas can be severely and noticeably affected by a vitamin B3 deficiency. One of the more alarming and specific symptoms is poor skin and mucous membranes. This can lead to swelling, inflammation, and soreness of the gums, the tongue, and nasal cavities, as well as the skin. Dermatitis is a common early symptom of vitamin B deficiency. Severe B3 deficiency can lead to pellagra, with lesions that develop on the skin in the presence of sunlight. The arrows here are pointing to conjunctival concretions. These involve liver-mediated problems with protein and fats. As sclera markings, they appear as little avascular, granular, yellow-white masses that resemble patches of crystals and are visible upon lid eversion. They most often appear on the palpebral conjunctiva, which means in the medial campus areas and under the lids. Pathologically, conjunctival concretions are usually discrete and benign, but sometimes they become confluent or grouped together. They are made up of phospholipids, elastin, and calcium. When you see this sign, think of high concentrations of cholesterol and phospholipids in the blood. Think of a liver and or pancreas problem. The liver and pancreas are both involved in many metabolic processes in the body, especially in digestion and metabolism of carbohydrates, protein, and fats. The problems in the metabolic function of the pancreas can affect the liver, and vice versa. Functional changes in these organs can have a negative cascading effect on the whole body. In this particular case, either the liver, the pancreas, or both are having problems in the synthesis or metabolism of certain proteins and fats, especially cholesterol, cholesterol esters, and phospholipids. The remedy for this and so many other disorders is simply a diet of mostly raw or all raw natural unprocessed fruits, veggies, nuts, and seeds. The line descending vertically from the top of the photo is called an IC line or immune compromise line. Notice how this IC line emanating from the left upper quadrant joins with this very recent and active congestion line coming from the thymus area, which involves the lymphatic immune. Now, note also how that big thick line goes directly into the spleen. Note also how there is a short influence line moving inferiorly into the spleen area, and that the upper portion of the spleen line moves superiorly into the arterial heart area. How do we know where these lines are going? We have developed a complete map of the body as seen in the scleros. Sclerology is such an exciting science. There's just so much more to show you. And you can learn it all. If you're a health professional needing a truly effective and completely natural, quick, and in-depth health evaluation technique, look no further than sclerology. If you're wishing to break into the natural health field, Grand Medicine can help. Thanks for watching.